Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about two really important things. The first one is making sure that you save your files appropriately for the web and watermarking. And the reason why I am tagging both of these together is because I don't really like to watermark my photographs on EverydayHDR.com. And the reason why I don't like to do that is because I don't want to distract the viewer from the photographs. I mean, it's my website. Uh, I would assume that everyone there would know that they came from me uh, because I don't steal stuff from other people. So uh, I would expect the same from others. But uh, I don't want to distract the viewer from, from my photographs on EverydayHDR.com. So I don't tend to watermark on there. But I do save them for the web accordingly so that I can ensure that someone doesn't steal it and print it and claim it as their own. Now I'm going to get into watermarking in a second and some of my theories on watermarking. First things first, let's go ahead and save this one for the web. And I'm going to go to image. This is a very large file. It's about 140 megabyte TIFF file. It's a very, very large file. So I'm going to get this. They could print it and they could do all kinds of stuff with it. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go to image, image size. And under the image size, change the resolution to something like 72 pixels. The reason why 72 pixels is not a random number, uh, typical screen resolution is uh, 72 pixels. That's about all it can handle. It's all it can really show you. Um, now there should be monitors. There might be monitors out there that can show you more, but the old standard and the standard that I'm familiar with is 72 pixels per inch for resolution. The width is going to be about 1200. The reason why I say 1200 on the width is because um, most people that look at my website are viewing it in 1024 by 768 and I know that by looking at my Google Analytics so I tend to uh, size my photographs accordingly so when you do these changes make sure that you have constrained proportions selected if you don't have constrained proportions selected you won't see those little uh, uh, connection lines there and if you typed in uh, 1200 if, this, if the proportions were not constrained if I typed in 72 uh, and then typed in something like 1200, it's not going to change the height. So I want to make sure I constrain proportions. 1200 at 72 pixels per inch. And change the 72 pixels per inch first and then the width. Otherwise, it's going to make it really small. Press OK. Now I'm going to go to File, Save for Web. And under Save for Web, I want to save it as a JPEG and high. There's a couple other settings here. There's very high, there's maximum, there's medium, there's low. I like to save it as high. It's not the best of the best quality, so if someone does take it, they're, they might get a decent screen background for themselves, but they aren't going to get a good print, and they won't be able to use it for much of anything else. So I'm going to go to Save. All right, so let me go ahead and open up where I saved that to. If you look at the TIFF, it's 140 megabytes. It's huge. If you look at that JPEG, it's 308 kilobytes. Very small. So that's what you want to upload. Um, when you do upload something very small like that, it's going to not only is it going to keep other people from stealing your stuff, it will also uh, make it so that when someone clicks on the, that photograph on your website, that it's it's a very large, um, a very small download. It takes very very little time to download it and for them to see it. So now I'm going to talk about watermarking. I don't like watermarks because I tend to think that they distract from the photograph. I've seen some very large watermarks. Let's just I'll show you one real quick. Let me just I'm gonna do Blake Rudis photography. And what you're seeing here is Blake Rudis is very small, it's 10 point font right now. It's very tiny. If I click on Blake Rudis and press Command or Control T, then I can press shift and move on one of those corners. And not only am I increasing the size of that layer, I'm also increasing that font. So the point, the point on that font went from 10 point font to 163 point font. The reason why you want to do something like that is because it's not uh, rasterized yet. So as you blow it up, you aren't going to get any uh, pixelation on the sides of the text. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that right here. So I've got a very uh, distracting watermark right now. It's just really big and it's right in front of you. And you might be thinking, why would you even do that? But I have seen watermarks like this that are very, um, you know, distracting. And they're right there in the center there. People try to be creative by wrapping around the hill, you know, putting putting their, their watermark on the hill. And then it, it becomes about, well, is it more about your watermark and your name on that photograph? Or is it more about the photograph as it is? So for me, if I do watermark, 
I watermark only for clients that I'm going to be giving them photographs to share on something like Facebook or if I share them on Facebook for a client um, that way it, it might get me more uh, more clientele from their friends that see Blake Rudis photography on their photograph but uh, I don't want to distract from the photograph at the same time so anyone with a clone stamp tool can get around your watermark let's just face it but there's classy ways you can do it instead of being uh, very uh, bam and to the point like hey Blake Rudis it's really huge well is it more about me or is it about my work for me it's about my work I could care less if somebody knows it comes from me. So what I'm going to do is also put photography below this. I'm going to make another type font and put photography here. Again, it's 10 point font. It's very small. What I'm going to do now is if you don't have rulers selected, they're very helpful to have selected. You can press Command or Control R to toggle your rulers on and you can move a guide into your font. And the reason why I move the guide in there is because when I enlarge the photography by pressing command or control T I want to be able to um, line it up with the sides of my name pretty cool huh and now I'm gonna go ahead and make this just a little bit smaller so it's not really about the photography it's more about the Blake Curtis part okay so if I press command or control H it'll get rid of those guides so now you're looking at, I'm just going to move that up there because it's annoying. Now you're looking at my watermark that is is distracting, like I've said before. It's right there in the, in the center of the photograph, but it would keep someone from, from downloading it, right, and printing it. Well, it would also keep me from looking at it because I don't really like watermarks that are that large. So I'm going to press Command or Control, uh, the Command or Control button, and select Photography. And then I'm also going to press the Command or Control T and minimize those both together and make it a much smaller watermark and maybe even put this watermark down here in the corner. The reason why I like my watermarks in the corner is that as as humans, especially us humans here in America where I'm, where I'm doing this tutorial, we read from left to right and most cultures do read from left to right. There are some that read from right to left but what that does by putting your watermark in the lower right hand corner is and allows the viewer the space to look through your entire photograph and then by the time they're done they get to that lower right hand corner they've seen the whole photograph and now they've seen that it came from you so your lasting impression is going to be your watermark but it's not the most important impression you get my point they get the photograph they see the photograph and then the last thing they see is your watermark and what's the last thing to stick in their head after seeing such a great photo? Ooh, great photo. Ooh, Blake Crudis. Awesome. They've just connected the two things. Instead of seeing your watermark really big over the entire thing and just being uh, overindulged by your name. Now, the magic hasn't happened yet. The magic with the classy watermark. This is not a bad watermark, but you can go ahead and reduce the fill on these. And you're thinking, why the heck are you doing that? You don't have a watermark anymore. You're right, I don't but it's just invisible it's still there it's just the fills down there's no there's no color painted in there it's like a paint by number that has no numbers in it right now so if i double click on blake rudis somewhere on the right hand side of there i'm going to get the layer style to to pop up now with the layer styles when it comes to watermarks there's three things i usually like to hit that's going to be bevel and emboss outer glow or inner glow let's do inner glow on this one and drop shadow now with the drop shadow, I tend to like that distance to be all the way to the left. And what that does is um, the distance at zero, it makes it so that the shadow is going to come straight from the back. It's not going to have a left, right, or top or bottom preference. It's just going to come straight from the back of the font. Move the spread up just a little bit. Move the size up just a little bit. Maybe even move the opacity up a little bit. And now you've got a classy watermark. It's not taking up the entire screen. You can still see the image behind it. And if you want to do the same thing to the photography part, you don't have to remember all the settings that you did. Just go ahead and right click, go to copy layer style, and then over photography, go to paste layer style. And there you go. You now have a classy watermark that you can make this interchangeable. You can take the drop shadow off. Now it's barely visible. You can leave the drop shadow on, take the inner glow out. You can uh, take the bevel and boss out. 
and there there might even be a better watermark because now the name doesn't have any texture to take away from the background. So that's how you can make a nice classy watermark and if you want to save this watermark you can. So let's say I save this image and I'm done with it but I want to save my watermark for future purposes. I can use the crop tool first of all I'm going to go and delete my background and then I can use the crop tool and crop right over that Blake Rudis photography and I can go to file save as and save this as a PSD I'm just going to save it to the desktop now it's easily transferable over over any other photograph um, if I want to put on any other photograph I can what I'm going to do now is show you that this photograph right here is already saved for web image size 72 pixels per inch before we had uh, 300 and or 240 pixels per inch so when I bring this over so say you did want to reuse this watermark but you already saved your files as 72 pixel per inch already saved for the web and you wanted to select both of these and move it over to another photograph it's going to be really large and it's not going to look right you can press control T commander control T to resize it and then press control zero so you can grab the edges and bring that down but look what happens as you do that as you minimize that um, your shadow is a lot more potent and so is your inner glow so what you have to do is if you um, if you scale it down it's gonna go ahead and compact that and it's not gonna look so good because all these settings were set for something that was 240 pixels per inch they weren't set for something that was 72 pixels per inch so you might have to reduce the size you might have to reduce the opacity a little bit maybe even um, the spread a little bit so that that is not so uh, powerful take the inner glow and maybe drop the size of the inner glow down a little bit and let's see what's going on with my drop shadow it's still a little too strong right okay I'll just take that size and that spread down a little bit more I think the photography part is the one that's overtaking it. Now, if I right click on Blake Rudis, go to copy layer style, click on photography, paste layer style, again, we're left with that classy watermark that we've just made smaller. So if you don't want to have to do that, um, you can make a large watermark for your 240 pictures, and then you can go ahead and crop this one down and save this one as your 72 pixel per inch one, so that you know that um, if you're bringing it in to put it onto a photograph, you know exactly which one to put where. Again, my name is Blake Rudis. This is EverydayHDR.com. We talked about a ton of stuff here, a bunch of tips and tricks that you can use to make a classy watermark that does not distract from your photo, and also how to resize and save your photograph for the web to ensure that nobody steals it. Have a great weekend, everyone. Uh, if you're going to use this watermark technique, go right ahead. Have fun with it. You can make some really classy stuff with it. Have a great weekend. I think I said that. Goodbye.